So if you were to use these three examples to work with as a basis for understanding the distribution, where would you start? The first question that I would throw at you is assessing the effectiveness. Now, effectiveness is an interesting word. Uh, how, how does this apply in this specific context? If you remember, the first example that we saw was one of a credit portfolio. If we skip back quickly, here's the example that we saw earlier. A credit portfolio ranging from 1 to 12, clustered around two specific segments for the month of June. In this example, we're looking at a slightly different credit portfolio from a different client and a different bank. However, rather than looking at scores going from 1 to 12, we're actually looking at scores going from 0 to 100. In this instance, 100 is good and 0 is bad. Uh, we again see clustering happening in the middle. So the first question I ask whenever I teach this course is that when you see this distribution and you see this distribution and compare it with the first three, what stands out immediately? Credit, oil, currency markets, and credit again. Let me pose the same question in a slightly different fashion. If you were the board of directors who was reviewing the performance of the credit manager, whose efforts led to the creation of the histogram that you see in front of you, how would you evaluate the effectiveness of the credit function? Would you retain this credit manager? Would you give this credit manager a bonus? Or would you fire him? Three questions. If this is the only information you have in front of you, in addition to the three examples you'd seen earlier, would you say that the underlying credit function behind this distribution effective or not? 